Welcome back. We're on part two here. Gonna get the heads pulled off hopefully today, get them sent up to the machine shop. So I guess just real quick what we're gonna do is gonna unhook the rear engine mount, the little dog bone mount back there. Gonna jack the engine up, pull the valve covers, then pull the heads. We're not that far away, so we'll get this knocked out real quick this morning and uh, get these heads up to the machine shop. Raise it up. That's good. All right, come down with it. Oh, just a minute. All right, go down a little. Oh, just a minute. A little bit more. Oh. That should be good. Thanks. All right, so what I just did there, in case you're wondering, uh, well, we had the motor mounts loose there, obviously, from in video one. So I just threw, in this case, because I got the car in a lift, I just put a jack stand and a little block of wood underneath the oil pan, let the car down and lift the engine up. So that's why we had to take this, uh, we had to take that rear motor mount loose. Uh, a couple things I'll caution you doing this, don't go too high. They give you a lot of room to lift these engines up in these Subarus. Uh, you can pop the CV shafts apart, uh, you know, or destroy, you know, one of the boots perhaps, or, you know, pop it off there. So this one already has a bad axle on the right side. Wasn't too awful concerned about it because more than likely that'll get changed, uh, you know, as soon as we're done with the heads here. Um, other than that, that's kind of the key to doing these. Uh, it gives you enough room to get the heads off, enough room to get the valve covers off, and you know you don't have to fiddle around uh, very much. You know, underneath the vehicle now, we should be able to do everything we have to do from up top. And uh, when I get the heads off, we'll you know pick the car up, put the engine back on its mounts, and you know wait to get the heads back. If you're doing this at home, uh, you can always use a floor jack too. Uh, just jack the engine up either way. Uh, seems to make these a lot easier. So I've done them uh, you know for a lot of years. And, you know, it seems to work for us. side valve cover here. Go ahead and work on getting these taken off. Same thing on the driver's side.
the uh, passenger side, you can go ahead and start busting these head bolts loose. Bought this socket a long time ago. I used to do lots of Subarus, and it's a, a socket Snap-on makes four Subaru head head bolts. You know, it gives you it's like just the right length to clear the uh, rocker arms and such. Um, but uh, you know, prior to having this, I just used a, a little one-inch extension and a 14, 12-point deep or er, shallow rather. steering pump off. I'm just going to set this head back on here real quick. Pop the power steering pump off, I forgot. I'm sitting here talking with a customer and got ahead of myself a little bit. Zip tie. Keep that flopping back down. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> there. Just gonna go ahead and repeat the process over here on the driver's side.
raise it up. See, we got the heads off. That's pretty easy, too big a deal. Uh, I guess one thing I would say is when the engine's jacked up like that, you can, you know, you can rotate it left or right. So if you want to go back together, you'll probably see more because I'll scooch it all the way one way as much as it'll go. And, you know, put the head on and move it the other way. So sometimes that's helpful for taking it apart. Uh, I think what we got to do now is get the cams and uh, everything peeled off these heads when we're setting out the machine shop. And uh, if I call it quits for the day on this car and move on to something else. I think we're good to go. We'll go ahead and uh, pull these rocker arms off. I always like to turn the cam, get it kind of in a neutral position. That way it doesn't have, you know, one valve uh, open. And, uh, you know, as we're trying to pull it off and, you know, torque on the uh, rocker arm shaft. So we'll go ahead and buzz these off. It is important that you don't mix mix up the cams or the you know the rocker arms from head to head. So just keep everything where it was. And you'll be in good shape. Got them all. All right, now we gotta get the supper can bearing off. These things can usually be stuck on there pretty good, so this one really wasn't that bad. And I've had these before; they're uh, you know they're stuck, um, especially on those uh, all that variable cam ones. Always no gun shy, take them off. So there should be a dowel pin under here, I assume. Uh, don't get under here where the screwdriver on the bearing surface is really give it the beans because you can actually mess it up. So let's go ahead and wiggle it up off here. Yeah, let's see, so we got a dowel pin here, a hollow one, and we got a solid one back there. So but this is the most important thing you don't mix up on any head is you know it's mating half here because when these are line boards they're done as an assembly so definitely don't uh, don't go mixing those up. Pull out our cam seal, put the cam up out. This part plug is in there cooking for a little while. This one looks good on the outside, but uh, must be that one had a, uh, that's one of the ones that had the spark plug tube seal leaking on it, must be. All right, so it looks like we've got this head here ready to go. If your dowel pins are stuck in there, just best to leave them alone. Um, if you got a dowel pin remover and you want to pull them out, go ahead, but uh, not really necessary. I would just say when you take it down to the machine shop, you know, just make sure they're aware that you've left a couple of dowel pins in there and you gotta make darn sure they're in there when you put it back together. So, the uh, guy I use is pretty good. Uh, I don't have to worry about things like that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just rinse this off a little bit and we'll throw it in a box. We can run it down there and we'll get, uh, get the uh, left head there stripped down. 
There, real similar process on the left head. Well, the only difference, I guess, is the uh, cam sensor here. You got to get that off to get to one of the bolts. No big deal, really. I'll peel that out of there. So we're in good shape with this one too. Just about to just peel them rocker arms right up off there. This engine's pretty dirty, really. Uh, the majority of Subarus and stuff I do are. Pretty well clean. I don't know what the uh, maintenance history is on this. It's not a car I normally service, so hard to say. <laughs> Got to get this cam sensor um, bracket, I guess you'd call it, out of the way. Uh, let's see if we can't find a place to. Tap up on that. It's on a on a dowel, uh, well, shoot, I can't show you because it's on the bottom side of that one, but uh, there's a big hollow dowel right here. Uh, so we'll see if we can't just wiggle it a little bit to get it to crack loose. And go grab a small hammer. See if we can't get this thing cracked loose. I think the screwdriver is the most abused tool you can have. All right. I really just want to stick a screwdriver in there. Oh, but not it up at all. See if this one comes off just as easy. And it does. Huh. Kind of makes me wonder if somebody's been in there before.
now it's extra. A lot of the later model stuff have, uh, well, they've got metal brackets and other things bolted to the head there you got to get off. So we'll go ahead and whiz the spark plugs out of this one. Get cleaned off and throw it in a box. Guess we can wrap this video up right here this will be part two even though i haven't finished part one anyhow job went pretty smooth i'll grab the camera walk around give you the 12 cent tour and kind of get you an idea as to where we're at not going to get too excited yet about getting things uh you know cleaned up and you know ready to go back together until we hear from the guy at the machine shop to let us know that you know the heads are good there's no cracks you know things of that matter it's uh been down the road before where you kind of jump the gun and get the engine all ready to have the heads put back on and all your parts are clean and then you find out that you know both heads are cracked and needs new heads and now the customer's going to chuck the car so uh learned my lesson there but uh at any rate let's uh, walk around and see where we're at this is what we look like under the hood both heads removed and haven't cleaned up anything, so there's a lot of carbon and, and junk sitting down in the cylinders, but uh, all in all, they look pretty decent. Got the engine sitting back on the engine mounts. The AC just set up out of the out of the way there. And same thing on this side. Really not much to not much to see under the hood, obviously. But if you've never done one, that's kind of what they look like. Like I say, a lot of guys pull the engines, but you know, either way, it works. So we come over here on the bench. We've got our cams and our upper cam bearings there, just kind of sitting there, and our rocker arms for both heads. And like I say, I'm just going to kind of all leave and sit in limbo until we find out everything's good. And one of it is, and we've got a whole lot of cleaning to do. And then we come over here and got the heads all boxed up, and just kind of hose the oil off them. And take them down to Rogers engine rebuilding get that fixed up so that's it we'll conclude with that and uh, come back for part three and we'll see how this job goes